NVIDIA's CEO Jensen Wang just made some gigantic predictions about the future. This is one you have to watch. I always love coming to Germany because this is the land of engineers. Mm. You know, this is where we're all very welcome and I feel very welcome every time I'm here. I'm also very happy to be here today because this idea actually started with me and I approached you about this great idea. Well, our industry, this story really started with the transformation of our industry. As you know, we're at a transition time in the computer industry. After 60 years of general purpose computing, the technology that NVIDIA invented over the course of 30 years is now shifting how everything is done. Every single layer of the computer industry, from the chips, to the systems, to the software, to the applications, are being completely revolutionized by artificial intelligence. After 15 years of working on AI, it is now transforming every single industry, including, finally, manufacturing. Manufacturing is extremely difficult. The reason for that is because physical AI needs to understand the structure of the world and the laws of physics. Wow. And the work that is done here in Germany is done at such an extraordinary scale and precision, we have to have incredibly good AI. Yeah. But finally, that day is here. And this is a very exciting time because Germany had a vision of industry 4.0 fusing digital with physical. Yes. And finally, now with artificial intelligence, we will supercharge Industry 4.0. And this will be the era of industrial AI. And so I'm very excited about that. Today is a very big day. And Tim, your, your vision is absolutely spot on. And the reason for that is because these GPUs, these computers, are the modern versions of factories. These are factories, just like factories of cars and all the industrial yes. factories of Germany. These are factories of intelligence. And in the future, in Industry 4.0 with AI, every company that's a manufacturing company will have two factories. The factory for the car and the factory for the AI that drives the car. This computer, you apply energy to it. It runs an artificial intelligence model. And what comes out of it are tokens. And these tokens are like, you market the tokens for dollars per million tokens. Just like electricity, dollars, kilowatt hours. And this is the new industrial revolution. A machine that generates a commodity that has tremendous value. And which is the reason why this is a factory. Germany is going to be incredibly good at running these factories because as you know, Germany is really good at building and running factories. And this is going to be the new industrial factory. The first thing is we have to teach the, the model, which is software, we have to teach the model the language of information. We taught it, of course, English and German. We also taught it mathematics. We taught it robotic articulation, motion. We can also teach it chemistry biology, fluid dynamics. We could teach this software almost anything that has information encoded. Yeah. And so once you teach this computer running the software, the AI model, the language of that information and how to think and reason about that information, then it can translate the information. So let me give you an example. I can, to it's called tokens, numbers. I give this computer numbers in English, and then I say to this computer, translate it to yeah. German, it will output numbers that will become German. I could also give it a whole lot of English in a book, and I say, summarize all of that for me, and it will generate a summary of the book. The key is that it understands the meaning of the information. And the key is this computer can understand, can learn the meaning of the world's well, information. The real idea here is that we're producing intelligence. Now, intelligence, as you know, is very difficult to see. But the benefits of intelligence is very clearly easy to measure. Yeah. Now, one of the things that we all know is that the world has a shortage of labor. And let me give you one example of labor. 
let's pretend for a second that the shortage of labor we have is somebody to drive the car. Somebody yeah. drove me here today. And you asked the question, what is the value of artificial intelligence? In the case of the car, the self-driving car, we now have a digital and AI chauffeur. That AI chauffeur is, can learn to recognize the environment and manipulate the steering wheel and the gas pedal. And it does this incredibly well. Correct. What is the value of that AI? Maybe it's $20 per hour. <laughs> Whatever is the price of an AI chauffeur. And so, so whether it's measured in labor cost or it's measured in the benefit of the output, you said in many examples, the number of drug discoveries and examples yeah. has, has doubled. If your productivity improves, then you can measure the amount of output uh, and that is the value of AI. But what comes out of this machine is basically numbers because it's a computer. And these numbers are reformulated into intelligence. Yes. The, the, the intelligence of human language, the intelligence of numbers, the intelligence of chemicals and proteins. This yeah. computer right here will replace an entire yes. data center of CPUs. That's how efficient this is. Right now in the United States, we're seeing expansion of GPU computing in data centers at a really incredible pace. The fastest growing companies in the world today are artificial intelligence companies, and they're growing at exponential rates. Many of them are incredibly profitable already. The timing is really important. It's time for oh, yeah. Germany to race. This is the next industrial revolution. In combination with your industries, will turbocharge industry 4.0. It's going to be enormously important. And I think it's going to be the beginning of a new phase of growth and innovation for Germany. One of the most important ingredients of artificial intelligence is energy, and that energy is created here. And then the last part of artificial intelligence is the economic flywheel. And for the first time, with the factories here, you will be able to apply energy here in Germany, drive the economy of an industry of Germany, and have the economic benefits terminate in Germany. Yeah. And so that flywheel will be completely inside Germany. Jensen Huang says every manufacturing company in the AI era will need two factories. The physical factory building products and the AI factory producing the intelligence that runs them. He makes the point that GPU systems are factories just like factories which build cars. The computer is a factory where you apply energy into it. It runs an artificial intelligence model and what comes out of the other end are tokens. Historically, you built a factory, produced physical goods, and then sold them. Your core competency was manufacturing efficiency, making things faster, cheaper, and better, which is still necessary, but no longer sufficient alone. Now you need a second parallel operation that's completely different. The AI factory doesn't produce physical goods, it produces intelligence. It consumes energy and compute to generate tokens that becomes things like autonomous driving systems, predictive maintenance algorithms, quality control, or supply chain optimization. This is no longer just software, but these are actually products themselves that require continuous production from the AI factory. And the economics between these two types of factories are different. A car factory has high capital costs up front, then relatively stable production costs per unit. An AI factory, on the other hand, requires massive upfront investment in compute infrastructure, then ongoing costs that scale with usage. But the marginal cost of additional AI inference is much lower than additional physical production. Which then begs the question to large manufacturing companies, how much do you invest in each factory? Mercedes might spend billions on physical manufacturing capacity, but now they also need to spend billions for AI infrastructure to produce digital twins of their factory. In addition, the talent required is completely different. Running a car factory requires mechanical engineers, supply chain experts, quality control specialists. Running an AI factory requires machine learning engineers, data scientists, and compute infrastructure experts. Manufacturing companies need to build entirely new organizations and capabilities that they've never built before. But AI factories also operate fundamentally different to physical factories because of their exponential growth dynamics. AI creates an exponential flywheel where more compute enables better models, which attracts more users, generating more data, which enables more functionality, creating accelerating returns that compound over time, unlike anything in traditional manufacturing. Jensen explained that AI companies are growing at exponential rates and are incredibly profitable. Part of that is because you can just continue teaching AI models. For example, they can learn English, German, mathematics, robotic articulation, chemistry, biology, fluid dynamics, and the list goes on. 
Traditional factories tend to operate with linear scaling. You double production capability, you roughly double output. Efficiencies improve incrementally over time, whereas AI factories operate on exponential curves where improvements compound exponentially. Start with compute. More GPUs means you can train larger models on more data. Larger models with more parameters develop emergent capabilities. They don't just get slightly better, they unlock entirely new abilities at certain scale thresholds. For example, GPT-4 can do things GPT-3 fundamentally couldn't, not just because of algorithm improvements, but because of scale. And when something like ChatGPT became useful enough for real work, usage exploded from thousands to hundreds of millions of users in months. That's exponential adoption, not linear growth. Each user's interaction generates data, prompts, corrections, preferences that feeds back into improving the models. More users and better models enables more functionality. An AI that handles text well can expand onto images, then video, then robotics. Each new capability opens new markets and use cases, driving more adoption and more data. The flywheel accelerates, more compute, better models, more users, more data, more functionality, then eventually better models again. And this also explains why AI companies are becoming incredibly profitable already, despite massive infrastructure costs. Once you've trained a good model, the marginal cost of serving additional users is low because the value created is high. A $20 an hour AI chauffeur serving millions of cars can generate enormous revenue from infrastructure that's already built. The exponential nature also creates winner takes most dynamics. Companies that scale compute and data faster pull ahead not just incrementally, but exponentially. So OpenAI's lead over competitors isn't just about having better engineers, it's about having more compute, running more models, serving more users, generating more data. That advantage compounds daily. And this is why making a start in the race is so important to do as early as possible. Exponential growth means small leads become insurmountable quickly. The gap between companies investing aggressively in AI infrastructure today versus waiting is the difference between being able to catch a company in the future and them having an insurmountable lead. Picture this, a potential client searches for what your business offers and your YouTube video appears. Before they've even booked a call, they've built trust with you, turning them into a warm lead. That's why our clients are hitting $100,000 months because YouTube turns attention into authority. If you run a business, book a call and I'll show you exactly how to make this happen.